if you're still wearing f***ing AirPods when editing videos, then, oh my God, then stop it. Stop it now. And there's a couple of reasons why. Hey there, GB here. I want to talk about something that is so common and I see a lot. And actually, it's something I've been guilty of doing far too much until recently. And that is about your headphones. Your favorite pair of Apple AirPods, whether it's the latest AirPods Max, the Pros, or just the OGs, might not be your best friend when it comes to video editing. Stay tuned for answers such as when to leave those AirPods in their case, when they're totally okay to use, why AirPods are great but also really bad, what you should use instead, and do worms have eyes? Who let the dogs out? Can I take post-it notes from work? How much rice should I cook for one person? These are all important questions. So let's dive deeper into why you need to be careful what you choose to listen on and how it can affect your videos. Oh, and uh, don't forget to leave a like. I would love that. Audio sync issues. Here's the first problem AirPods give us. Have you ever spent ages on a video edit perfecting every cut and transition only to watch it back on social media and feel like your audio is out of sync and this this isn't why i edited well it's a common yet overlooked problem that's an issue for not only loads of junior video editors but established ones too and it's probably down to your bluetooth headphones you see while modern technology has given us the convenience of wireless listening with devices like these and it's the same issue regardless of brand it's not an apple thing the same technology can be your worst enemy when it comes to video editing. When you're meticulously aligning audio to your footage frame by frame, even a minor delay can throw off an entire project. And unfortunately, that's what Bluetooth headphones often bring to the table, latency. Latency is basically uh, the time it takes for the sound from your edit to get to your ears. And the harsh truth is that Bluetooth isn't the quickest way of sending audio. It takes far too long for the editing machine to take the audio, encode it for the Bluetooth transmission, send it through the air, then be received on your headphones and decoded into what you hear. There will always be a delay of some kind and when you need to make sure that the audio matches the visuals and every frame matters, then you're always gonna have an issue. And if you edit on AirPods right now and are the sort of person who leaves comments on Reddit saying, I don't get any lag on my Bluetooth headphones, then I'm afraid you're just not looking at your exported videos close enough. Or you're making videos that don't have any key visuals matched to sound. I said visuals then, funny, never mind. But still, there's more reasons why you shouldn't use them. The sound of AirPods. AirPods make stuff sound great, and that's brilliant for listening to music, watching a movie, or whatever you do on your device. But it's not ideal for video editing because they're artificially sweetening your audio to potentially sound better or worse, or just different. Your bass might sound great on AirPods, but flat and boring on the TV. Your dialogue might sound natural in your ears, but harsh and nasally on someone's iPhone. You get the idea, and it's not the biggest problem in the world. And again, it depends what you're editing, but it's something to be aware of, especially for video editors who may not know of its potential impact on your deliverables. Battery life. Okay, this isn't super important, but it's just another thing to bear in mind. If you're a full-time editor or someone who spends a fair amount of time on their videos, then there's the potential for you to run out of juice. The third generation AirPods only have six hours of battery life and your standard work day is eight hours. Even if you charge them on your lunch break, you might run out of juice. And if you're thinking you can edit with just one earphone in, Oh, don't do it. I've seen so many times people send over videos and they don't realize the audio mix is wrong or the dialogue's only on one side or because they edited with one earphone in. I've done it myself not that long ago. So what's the solution? Well, it might feel like a step backward, but returning to good old fashioned wired headphones is actually a leap forward for precision audio edits. Headphones like these provide nearly zero latency performance sort of. Smarter people than me uh, talk about the laws of physics and they say zero latency is impossible. But apparently wired headphone latency is somewhere around five to 10 milliseconds. While on Bluetooth, it's probably between one and 300 milliseconds. It's quite a difference. So these kind of headphones, ones with a wire, mean you're pretty much hearing what happens on screen as close to the same time as humanly possible. 
there's no perceivable gap between action and reaction. And it's this kind of responsiveness that's super important for perfectly syncing sound effects, making sure dialogue matches lip movements, or those musical beats matching your cuts. And when it comes to audio quality, there's loads of options for wide headphones that have what we call a flat response. And that means what you hear is the same as what is coming out of your edit. These headphones don't sweeten the sound. They're, they're not boosting the bass or taming the high end. It's natural. It means that if there's a problem, you can hear it and fix it. And of course, they don't need batteries, so you can edit for as long as you want and not even have to give it a second thought. You can edit with two ears all day and night long. Now, on this channel, I'm never about encouraging people to spend money needlessly. And because I'm not Marcus Brownlee, I'm not going to give you a detailed rundown and comparison of 12 different sets of headphones and talk about features such as their frequency response. I'm just not that guy, but I will tell you what I use now what you could get if you're feeling flush, and what to get if you need to be more cautious with your money, and that's totally okay. These, these are the Sony 7506. They've long been a favorite choice among video editors for decades. They're known for their durable design, clear and flat frequency response, and comfortable fit for long editing sessions. They fold up, I'm not gonna do it now. They fold up small, have a good isolation, and can take a beating, and you can get them for about 80 pounds. These are what I recommend for most people. If you want to spend more, look at the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros. If you want to spend less, these little Sony ones are about 12 quid and do a great job. I'll put the links in the description for all of these so you can check them out. When it's okay to use AirPods. But of course, like everything, AirPods might be a totally okay choice for you. If you're editing a video that doesn't have any cuts matched to music, then you could be fine. If you also don't have any important stuff like dialogue or different sounds to mix together, then you could be fine. If you know the audio you're importing has already been professionally mixed, then you don't have to worry so much about what you listen on. Despite what people say in forums, it depends what your project is. And never forget that in a pinch, if you need to, then AirPods will get you out of a hole. Just bear in mind the potential issues and you'll be fine. One bit of advice I suggest, regardless of what you use to edit, Always watch back your video on another device and play it out loud, whether that's on a phone, a tablet, a TV, whatever, just check it over. The important thing to remember from this video is I'm not saying you must, under no circumstances, use AirPods. As usual, it depends what you're editing. As long as you're aware of the potential weakness of any Bluetooth headphones, then you can make your choices accordingly. But avoid that lag, deliver the video you intend to make, trust the audio mix and keep yourself and your client or your audience happy. I've done that thing of editing an awesome video, then watching it back and realizing the timing is off and you don't have time to fix it and it sucks. So don't do that. That's enough rambling from me. Don't forget to subscribe if you've made it this far and want to see more that might help elevate your video production skills or photography. And I'd love to hear from you about your own headphone experiences or personal recommendations for what to use. So drop them in the comments below and we can all learn together. Oh, do one more thing for me. Be a good human for fuck.